Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you're new to the channel guys, click subscribe and a happy new year to all guys. So it's January 1 right now and I know um, in just, I mean past few hours ago, a lot of us were celebrating for the new year. But the game developers for Splinterlands doesn't stop from making the town hall updates. And right here guys... Here we have the summary. So for those who aren't able to attend the town hall summary, uh, let's run through the updates that were given by the game developers. So right here, it was set at December 31st, 10 a.m. Eastern. So it's 10 p.m. here in the Philippines. So let's start by this update. So the speakers, we have Agroad, Hardpoint, Nate Aguila. And then for Chatter, Main topics were the 2021 uh, company achievements, teams year-end review, and then AMA summary. So, for the recordings, you could go and watch. But right now, we'll just run through the summary. So, we have here the company achievements. So, January, Splinter Lance has awarded $200,000 in tournament prizes. New rule sets and new reward cards are announced. By February, Splinterlands completes asset bridge to Wax blockchain. So, if you have um, a wallet for Wax, you could buy cards and packs in there. And then, diesel liquidity pools for DEC are launched through Hive Engine. March, Splinterlands completes DEC bridge to Binance Smart Chain. For April, Splinterlands announces completion of best quarter in company history. The first guild brawls begin. So, it was here when Brawl was uh, introduced. May card looking feature is introduced for enhanced asset security. Upcoming governance tokens, Splinter Lands, or SPS is announced. Um, June, June 9, last of 150 plots of Praetorian land are sold. So it was during this time that the plots were sold out. June 11, last of 1.5 million untamed. Booster packs were sold and then team up with YGG or Yield Guild Games. So YGG is a uh, one big uh, uh, gaming community. And then July, it has a partnership with Zen Sports. On-site card rental system implementation, I think it was July when I started playing. It's on my account. If you click on profile, you could see I started way back in this, there in june 2021 but uh back then i was a uh, dumb dumb a dummy why because i only wait for the end of the season to open five uh rewards yes i don't know the rental i don't know the system uh <laughs> i'm just a, a a newbie a dummy and then uh completion of the sps private token sale with 3.6 million race SPS token launch, daily SPS airdrop begins. And then for August, massive scaling infrastructure and Twix. Splinterland sells 60,000 spellbooks. Uh, 50,000 daily active users, 300,000 active card rentals on Splinterland's rental market. And then 100,000 spellbooks purchased. During September, new reward cards were released. Splinterlands becomes most active blockchain game. Season and reward updates and then the Chaos Legion presale was announced. Game economy and reward updates. Come October, there is a 500,000 DAU surpass for the first time. Chaos Legion presale goes live. Tom of Chaos is launched and then the security updates update 1 and 2. Come November, there were additional 750,000 spellbooks sold, averaging 400,000 DAU. Bunch of spoiler updates, check out on the release notes. And then come December, guys, uh, Chaos Legion presale sells out of 1 million packs. Splinterlands nominated as Black Blockchain Game Developer of the Year. SPS token listed in SushiSwap, BabySwap, and Alpaca Finance. And then we have the Phase 2 of the Chaos Legion sale with 2 million packs available. So for the year-end review for Hardpoint, uh, this is his dream job transformed into a calling. One of the biggest achievements was handling the explosive growth of the game and player base this year. 
people are the value. It's not just people are the value that we are going to extract. It is the people are the value and that is why it matters that we take care of them. Very excited to continue building the platform and make it seamless with blockchain and gaming. Hardpoint terms it as frictionless crypto. Want to make this easy and frictionless for people to get involved in this new financial world and prosper from it. Anytime I talk to Agi, he ends the conversation by saying, hire more devs. <laughs> so there you go guys, hire more devs. So the team uh, has been expanding and growing uh, since, uh, I mean for this year. Really want to get the mobile app more functional and easier to use. So uh, as we may know, there is a an app for the game, but I seldom use that. I, I'd rather play on my uh, mobile phone web browser. So Hardpoint Splinterlands Tech Group is building entire teams for product design, product management, creative development, data services, tech support, community mod moderation, security, infrastructure. So all in all, this is uh, his functions. For Nate Aguila, biggest challenge is dealing with Agrod. Why? Because he is very ambitious. He wants to do everything and he wants to do it right now. Uh -huh. As up. Land is going to be so much more than we originally conceived. So guys, for those landowners, this will be huge. And we're just waiting for uh, the updates. Splinterlands will be more than just a card game. So stay tuned for those updates. When you log in, you will have so many different opportunities for gameplay. And actually, I made a blog in terms of this one on how you could earn. Uh, I made a blog of uh, how to earn uh, 8 ways to earn and then 10 ways to earn for Splinterlands. We are creating a game that we want to play, of course. For Chatter, with all the growth and all the scaling, we are still able to stay boots on the ground and stay on the ground floor with the entire community. Biggest challenge in 2021 was building a foundation to start launching marketing strategies. Different platforms look at Splinterlands as an alien project. That has changed as more and more platforms start understanding the value in Splinterlands. We are slowing bridging the path to mainstream adoption. So covered by the Sun UK. Excited to bring Splinterlands out of the digital landscape and really into the mainstream world. For Agroad, excited to see how much the team has grown, hard, hard point, chatter, support team, creative team, etc. Actually, guys, I was trying to uh, be part of the support team we're in uh, for the tech support if there has issues and all. But it takes a lot of time to be uh, considered for the position. That's why uh, I focus on the gameplay and now we have our own user channel. Went from I'm both ambitious and impatient. Uh, <laughs> I'm seeing Splinterlands as a gaming platform, media company, DeFi as a core promise, a premise, and maybe even a physical place. Wow! They may put up a, a place or a store, a physical store for this one. Companies can't be doing just one thing. Have to integrate a, uh, at different levels. One Splinterlands to be doing more. The unsung hero is the support team. Yes, the support team are always there. Support team grew 25 times, was only one person in the middle of the year, currently development of knowledge based on upcoming live agent, 35,606 tickets created in the year, 1,114 unsold tickets, so there's still a lot of issues for the team, uh, 34,492 sold tickets, so they're working on that guys, please be patient, I don't want good employees that punch the clock. I want exceptional employees that call this a calling. That see this as their life's work, their masterpiece, their magnum opus. Wow. So for the AMA summary, learn to play stream with Hardpoint and Chatter. Goal is to stream every Friday evenings. Hardpoint and Chatter will create brand new accounts and try to climb up higher leagues. First schedule uh, link from the Discord will be January 7. So there will be a stream with uh, Hardpoint and Chatter. For the land, items and spells will have a burn mechanism. Nate's vision, regions will be a little cities within Pretoria. In between, those cities are going to be the Wildland. Wildland will introduce a bunch of new gameplay into the game for everyone to participate. So this is 
the semi-accurate representation of Pretoria. So, this is the map. So, daily active users after reward changes bots created plummeted to about 1 to 5%. Most new players coming into the game now are real players. So, play to earn Splinterlands is not a free-to-play game, guys. To earn, you need to invest your time and energy and actually some a bit of money. If you have, the more money you invest, the better your uh, returns. Splinterlands rewards for those who are committed to earning. But, uh, I mean, guys, this is, not, uh, this is not a financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But, as you can see in my account, I have uh, some earnings on my SPS, on my DEC, and on my cards. So, all in all, my in-game asset totals now to around 2,000 USD. So, I haven't cashed out for the game yet because of the SPS airdrop. And then next, uh, Splinterlands rewards to those who are committed to earning and building their assets. So, that's what I'm doing. Next biggest earnings will be from staking. Wow, I have staking from here. Guys, 3-1. <laughs> 3166 SPS airdrops. Team is prepared to release the Chaos Legion airdrops in an organized fashion. Will be based on how long the general sale lasts. But they are preparing for it. Tournaments. Next round of tournaments are going to try to incorporate more Chaos Legion rules. Bigger tournaments should be coming back soon. Team may hold off a bit longer until after Chaos Legion general sale. Reef Watchers. Our growth is leaning towards requiring vouchers for Reef Watchers. Okay. May only require a certain percentage of sales. Official details will be released later. So, for those who are holding their vouchers and receiving vouchers on a daily basis, uh, I think it will be valuable because Rift Watchers is like a booster pack. Uh, not that uh, big in terms of um, the numbers, but still, they are uh, they play in an important role for the game, especially for those uh, cards that you could use and create a meta out of it. So, the end of season rewards... Season end rewards doesn't complete the snapshot instantly. It takes a few minutes to fully complete due to the strain and growth. Team highly recommends renting past the season and timer. Uh, this is actually my uh, my video uh, on my channel. So if you're renting for the end of season rewards, you need to have a longer period. Do not rent that it's set on a timer so if there is still around 12 hours before end of the season then that's the time you go and rent or even uh four or five hours so that um players could not cancel your rent and if ever there are changes in the time wherein they'll extend because of some bugs or anything your rents will not expire Best would be an hour past the timer. The the way that way, if there are any hiccups with the snapshots, your rewards aren't at risk. So there you go, guys. For the recent updates for the SPS uh, 22, 2022 roadmap, uh, go check it out. SPS validator nodes, foundation treasury, reef watchers, land expansion, private sale and airdrop end dates, reward pools, and SPS delegation. So this will be soon, guys. So, for the past AMAs, go check it out. But basically, this is a summary for the AMA during the New Year's Eve with the team from Splinterland. So, I know a lot of us weren't able to join because we were preparing for our um, simple family gatherings for the New Year. And here is the update for the game. So, again guys, um, this is an update. For all of Splinterlands, the summary for the AMA. And again, if you're new to the channel, guys, click subscribe. And of course, Happy New Year to all, to Project Ace, to the Flirians, Wolf's Den supporters, Johnny Depp supporters, to the clan and Discord where I'm uh, connected like uh, uh, the Decipher. So, Happy New Year, guys. So, that's it for me. See ya!